Okay, part two of using Order Pro. So I use that quick entry view, say to add all of the books or use this search by. And the nice thing is it will count you down. You can see how much you have left and how much you've selected already. Once you've entered all of the free books book rewards, you can come down and you can choose your half price rewards. And using this, you can enter any half price rewards that the customer has. You can do it the same way by searching up here, or you can go over to quick entry view again if you know the ISBN numbers. And lastly, if you are using the 65% off $50, you can come down here to party bonus books. It's the last one. And you can select up to $50 worth of books to put here in under the 65% off coupon. So these books are going to be priced at 65% of the total that is here. So a $10 book would be $3 and 50 cents, et cetera. Um, 65 percent off they're paying 35 percent of what the cost is I should say so once you have all of your books entered um, what I like to do is come all the way down here to exp export all items to CSV and if you click that it is going to give you a an Excel file that lists all of the books that you've entered and I will check this against the wish list that she sent me or the list of books that she sent me. Um, I will send it to her. I will screenshot it or copy and paste it and send it to my hostess and say, hey, can you verify this? Take a look and make sure that I've got all of your books entered correctly. This is the final thing, books that are being sent. This is what your order will look like. So please verify that it's correct. Then once I have her come back and say that it's correct, I will click on next step up here. <coughs> Excuse me. And your next step is going to show you the order summary. And my recommendation is to basically ignore step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, step six, step seven, step nine, and all of the ones under it. The only thing you really need to be looking at is step eight, your figure total due. I promise you, if you look at all of these other things, they do make sense, but they have it broken down in a very, very strange convoluted way. And it doesn't make a lot of sense looking at the way that they have the numbers broken down up there. Um, it looks like you're adding tax twice. It looks like you're adding shipping and handling twice, et cetera. But it's just the way that they have the books broken down for free versus half price versus full retail. So I recommend coming over to step eight and looking at figure total due and you'll see the total sales, which will be the total of the half price books, the coupon books, the ones that they're paying 35% for, 65% off, and any full retail books. Shipping and handling will be the next line. Keep in mind that shipping and handling is charged on the full retail price of the books. So this $21.99 is 8% of the full retail value of her free half price and coupon books. Then you've got tax due and tax is charged only on the amount that they're actually paying. So this 244 is being charged on this 6258. Um, in some places you will also see tax charged on shipping, but that depends on the local law where they live. Um, and Usborn, the system will figure that out automatically for you. So it will charge tax appropriately. And then you've got down here the total. So I will take a screenshot of this, just these lines, or I will copy and paste these lines and I will give them to my hostess and I will say, okay, so your total due for these books is going to be $87. And then um, she can see where that is broken out um, or how that is broken out. So after that, you're gonna click on next step. And again, you can stop at any time, come back at any time. Um, and you will always see, you can always get back to where you were easily. You can also, um, under this go to step, you can jump ahead to whichever step you were at or whichever step you want to go back and check. So the next section is going to be the payment section. This is going to reiterate how much is due on this. You'll see this first section is called consultant payment or credit. You can theoretically put the customer's uh, credit card information in here, but I refrain from doing that because it saves this from session to session. Um, as you can see, it's got my name saved and my billing zip code saved. And I just would never want to make a mistake and charge somebody's credit card more than once for, or for an order that didn't belong to them. So just to take um, ultimate safety precaution, I never use this site unless it is something that I am paying for. 
Um, for instance, if I told a customer that I was going to give her a $5 book or something like that, or I was going to pay for the shipping on her order or something like that, I would subtract what I was going to pay and I would only enter that amount into the customer payment field and then I would pay the rest up here. You'll see that there's not a spot in here to put how much you are charging to this card. It just will automatically charge the remaining balance. So if you're going to do that for going to do that, if you're paying a portion, it's really important to do the customer payments first. So anyways, in this case, the guest, the customer is paying her the entire $87. So what I would do is come down here to add new customer payment, click on that, and it's going to pop up the payment window. And you can see it here. So you'll add in the amount that you are charging. In this case, it's $87 um, because that's the total. And you're going to put in the name, the card number, the expiration date, CCV or CVV code, phone, et cetera. You can just leave this check number authorization number blank. Then you're going to click add next payment. And what's that? what that is going to do is it's going to debit the amount up here so you will see if I were to make this actual payment, um, suddenly it would say total customer payments, $87, amount due from consultant, $0. Again, if I was paying some portion of this order, say $6 for shipping or something like that, it would say I would do code total customer payment. I would have done $81 when I made that payment. And then it would say down here, amount due from consultant, $6. And I would enter that amount here or I would enter my information here. And then when I clicked on next step, it would charge that amount. And the nice thing about Order Pro is you can do more than one credit card. So say this girl was combining some full retail books for her mom and with her, um, and with her host rewards, or this was a home show where the different orders were all being shipped to the hostess as part of the um, party. Anything that you enter in full retail in that step where you select books does count towards the party after you click combine e-show. So if she added $100 worth of retail books or this was a home show, you could add all those retail books and it will continue to bump her up to the next level of rewards. And then for the payment, so say that was, again, the mom was adding her um, payment into, or I'm sorry, the mom was adding her order into here and the mom wanted to pay separately you could do more than one customer payment. You would just have to figure out how much each person was due based on their share of the shipping and their share of the tax. And then you can just keep clicking add new customer payment and have each person pay their own share. So once that is all done, you're going to do next step. And I can't do that because I don't have an actual credit card in here, but you would click next step and it would take you to a final review screen that would say, you know, this order is going for review. Um, and then it would say, have a little button that said finalize order and you would click that and that would um, finalize the order for you. And actually, I wonder if I can see that if I go to one of my old submitted orders here. Let's see. I'm going to just click here and go to step final review and see if it lets me show you what it looks like. Yep. So this is what it's going to look like. After you click payment and you click next step, you'll get this section that says final review. In this case, it says it's already been submitted, but obviously if yours hadn't been submitted, it wouldn't say that. And then down here, you would see a button that says um, final review and it would let you submit the order that way. Then once the order has been submitted, you can come back to the orders at any time and you can click on completed orders and this would give you a list of orders that have already been completed and that you have already taken care of. You'll notice that these ones have both select and details. If you click select, it takes you back into the order process just like you were, um, saw when you actually entered the order. And it looks like the fields are editable. It looks like you can click in here and type over it. Um, it looks like you can go in and change a book by clicking select books, but you actually cannot. It will not let you change it. If you try to save it, it will tell you that that is not an option. You can also click here on, let's go back to completed orders here. You can click here and click details and you'll get a pop-up box that will give you information about it, including the tracking number if it's shipped already. 
Um, and then you can also create different folders to move these into. So for instance, I have a shipped folder. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to move 